This is one of Bangladesh's poorest regions. More than half the population live below the poverty line. But right now, it's harvest time. It's a time of plenty, a time for marriage. And all too often, the brides come from here, the local school. Young girls like Beasley. I want to be so many things when I grow up. I want to be a doctor so I can help people. I want to study. I want to become someone big when I grow up. But today is her last day of childhood. Tomorrow, Beasley is marrying an older man that she's only met once. Her groom is 25. Beasley is just 13. Under Bangladeshi law, the wedding will be illegal. I didn't want this wedding. I agreed under one condition, that I would continue my studies after marriage. They are marrying me off forcefully. When she gets home from school, the preparations for her wedding have already begun. Beasley's father has saved up enough money for a dowry to pay the groom's family. Because of this tradition, girls in Bangladesh are seen as a burden, no matter whether the families are Muslim, like most of the population here, or Hindu, like Beasley's family. For Hindus, marriage is full of rituals. The first of these symbolizes her future as a married woman. Beasley grimaces as the bangles are forced over her wrists, binding her to her future husband forever. Then Beasley's school uniform is traded in for her first sari. This marks her as a woman, even though she's still just a young girl. The last step is to unbraid her hair and tie it in a traditional knot, the symbol of a Bengali bride. Her transformation is complete. As everyone prepares for the festivities, I sit with Beasley and sense her helplessness. It's hard to know what to say. Does anyone want to leave their parents' house? No one wants to do that. But they are forcing me. What can I do? They are forcing me. She's shaking and she's terrified and she has no idea what's going on around her. She has no control over the situation. A bride is supposed to be the central theme for any ceremony like this. But for the first time, what I'm seeing is her being the last person being asked about anything. Outside, her aunt grinds turmeric into a paste. It will be rubbed on Tabizi's skin, so she glows at her wedding tomorrow. <laughs> then her aunts bless her with oil and water. Village elders only gave the go-ahead for Bizi to marry one day ago. She didn't have time to tell her friends at school. She's playing the role that's expected of her in Bangladeshi society, maintaining family honor by marrying young. The whole community is here, but no one seems concerned about what Beasley wants or that her marriage will be against the law.
On the morning of Beasley's wedding, I can't help but think how familiar this feels. I spent a large part of my childhood in Bangladesh. My grandmother was married when she was just 10 in a village like this one. I want to understand why this keeps happening, generation after generation. And if there's any hope for girls like Beasley, who would rather make their own choices like I did. There are organizations who are trying to stop child marriages since it was outlawed in the 80s. But today, Bangladesh still has the highest rate of child marriage in Asia. The laws are hard to enforce. Families defy the ban by making fake birth certificates. Yeah, it is illegal, but who knows the child age? You know, birth registration is not happening, yeah? So you can't take them to the law or to the court or anything because you cannot prove the age of the child. So there is no way that the government can take action. Tonight, Gebra Zyber works for Plan International, an NGO which is working to keep girls in school. But they're fighting against strong cultural beliefs. They do it from all over, in most places in Bangladesh. And uh, it has societal implication as well, because, you know, if one uh, child is, uh, does not get married at an early age, then society talks about it, why she is not getting married. Experts like Sanayat say a government proposal to lower the legal marriage age from 18 to 16 will be a disaster for many more Bangladeshi girls. Girls like Majeda, who live in a remote village in the country's north. Majeda is only 13 and was forced to marry last year. She can't talk openly in front of her husband, but after a great deal of persuasion, he gives permission for us to go for a drive. I grew up and worked in my uncle's house because my parents were too poor to take care of me. Then after he died, my parents married me off. I studied till the second grade. The further we go from her home, the more happy Majida seems. But when she talks about life with her husband, she can't look me in the eye. I didn't feel good getting married. I thought, how am I going to live with this man? Then, three months later, I realized I have to stay here. I have to stay at my husband's house for the rest of my life. Madeda is already a mother to a little boy. Doctors told her she's malnourished and is too young to deal with the baby. It's hard. I'm learning how to be a mother. Having a kid is so tough. My milk isn't enough, so the baby cries. When I was giving birth, the doctor wanted to do a C-section, but my husband said, no. The doctor said, how can I even have a baby because I was married so young? I have nothing in my body. At home, there are other problems. Majeda says she feels like a slave. When he wants sex, I have to give it to him. I tell him I don't like it. Then he says, if you stay in my house, you have to give it to me. He grabs me all of a sudden when I'm sleeping. Then. He attacks me. Majeda says her husband is often violent and beat her when she was pregnant. He beats me with his hands on my back. When he beats me, I feel sad. But there's little sympathy here for girls like Majeda. One village elder tells me girls should be married young for their own protection. Getting a girl married young is a good thing. Even if they die, at least they are married. It's also a good thing because some run away. 
They leave the house and mix with boys. How do we stop this problem? Marry them off at an early age. Child brides aren't just at risk of domestic violence. Pregnancy and childbirth can cause significant damage to their undeveloped bodies. Dr. Beatrice Berger is a doctor at Bangladesh's only clinic dealing with fistula, a complication during birth that causes the reproductive organs, rectum and bladder to split. The condition leaves young women incontinent and in pain, living as outcasts in their community. It's really hard to live near a, a patient who's always full of urine. It's like, honestly, I can well tell when we see them, it's, it's really hard to tolerate the smell. The worst case would be they die. I mean, many are dying. Anjuara is one of Dr. Berger's patients. She's been suffering fistula for nine years. Anjuar has just had an operation that will stop her living a life of shame. It's just very amazing to have the chance to help them in this situation and then that, to see them when they are, are dry. Like now she got operated yesterday and she spent, after many years, she spent a dry night. So that's, that's so amazing for her. It's too late for Anjara's marriage though. Her husband left her and married someone else. In these villages, girls like Anjuara lose their childhood in a blink of an eye. But one young man, Geshe Broy, is on a mission to stop girls from being married off so early. He takes his message door to door. Today, he's visiting a family who are planning to marry off their 13-year-old daughter. With him is a group of boys who Keshab is training to prevent child marriages. He thinks that's the best way to create change in the next generation. Yeah, <laughs> Keshab is determined to change her mind. Keshab hopes he made a difference, but it's not easy to change long-held cultural beliefs. It was a tragedy in his own family that drives him to try and stop child marriages. I had a niece who committed suicide by taking poison because her family was forcing her to marry as a child. She never wanted to marry so young. Everyone was screaming when we took her to hospital. I took her on a rickshaw, but halfway down the road, she began to choke. I felt sick. I kept thinking of her. Why isn't she here? How many more girls are going to die like this? Since then, Keshab has stopped dozens of child marriages in his village. Ashvia is one of the girls he saved. Oh, and a boy potro. 
Without him, I would be married off at 13. He came to my house and asked my parents why they are doing this. I told them I want to study and do something for my community. When my parents knew I could be something big, they understood and my marriage proposal was broken. When she finishes school, Ashfia wants to join the police force. But that still doesn't impress her mother. Well, daughters are expensive. If she goes to school, you have to buy her books. So having a daughter is a problem. If she goes to her husband's house, there's no issue with expenses. Now girls have the same rights as boys. But I could have gotten rid of the educational expenses if I could have married her off. Keshav wants to reach even more people with his message. And he knows how to draw a crowd. Tonight, thousands of people have come from all over the area to a special film screening he's organized. In villages with no access to electricity, TV or entertainment, the audience is hooked. It's Beasley's wedding day, and celebrations are beginning at her groom's house. This is the man Beasley is marrying. 25-year-old Shemel picked 13-year-old Beasley because he says she's easy to control. Shemel tells me he was offered a lot more dowry money to marry other girls, but he wanted the youngest and most innocent bride. I like her behavior, so I picked Beasley. She's pure. Most girls mix with other boys and have relations. I don't like that. I have had better proposals, but I didn't like the girl's behavior. A good girl goes to school and straight home, and that's it. Beasley dreams of being a doctor and wants to stay at school, but Shamil seems to have other plans for her. When I come home, she can cool me down and relieve me of my tension. A good wife takes care of me when I come home from my shop. She will make me food and get along with my parents. Then our community will consider her a good wife. As the wedding draws closer, Shamil's family is in full celebration. They are looking forward to the arrival of a new bride who can help them with household chores. I can't help but feel how different it is from the somber mood at Beasley's house yesterday. But for Shemol, not everything is going well. Local authorities have discovered his plans to marry a child, so they are going to have to hold the ceremony in secret. It's a bad omen to break the tradition of marrying at the bride's house, but there's no choice. We head to a location where many child weddings take place, away from prying eyes. Everyone is racing to get the marriage started. Beasley is already here. Her aunts help dress her in her wedding sari and turn her into a bride. Beasley seems resigned to her fate. She's quiet and sad. Go, Moise, Go, Moise. 
Shamal is also getting dressed. He seems a lot happier than Beasley. When they are both ready, the wedding can begin. The priest is told to hurry to get the rituals done in case the police come. The couple began the day as strangers. Now after the ritual of circling a fire seven times, they are married, bound together for seven lifetimes. There's a big sense of relief, except for Beasley, who hangs her head. As she says goodbye to her parents, it all becomes too much. She sobs in her mother's arms. Family members pull them apart. For a 13-year-old, this is an overwhelming moment. During the final blessing, she collapses to the floor. As Bisley continues to sob, a relative lifts her up. Then she's bundled into a waiting van with her husband and new in-laws. And just like that, her married life has begun. A week later, I go back to visit Beasley. Her life is already very different. As a new bride, her friends can no longer visit her, and she can't stay with her family. Her husband had promised he would allow her to return to school, but now that's not happening. Tumiki doctor hoy te chao. Ganeya. Na. Kita hola na power. It's sad to see how quickly a girl's dreams can be crushed. Not that Shamal seems to mind. Tumiki basa me to dano na. For thousands of girls like Beasley, the Bangladeshi culture of marrying young has continued generation after generation. In this world of grinding poverty, girls have little value. Until that changes, it's hard to see how future generations can break free. <laughs>